Today we're going to look through my 2022 sketchbook that has documented this journey of destroying my passion and finding it again at the end. I'm going to share with you six tips that I learned to sketchbook with passion again. Let's get started. This is a Strathmore mixed media soft cover sketchbook. So I started this in January of this year and completed it in October. I had brought the sketchbook into a class that I was uh, working in as a teacher's aide and was inspired by one of the students' work. So with that inspiration, I worked on a character that I've had in my mind for a while but haven't done much with. So I did a little, little work there with that. I worked a lot in pen in this one. Life drawing, just drawing some students in class and sketching some photos of when I lived back east. You know, throughout the sketchbook, it was hard to kind of keep going. This page, you can kind of tell that I was just struggling and didn't know exactly what to draw. Like, I wanted to work on some stylization and having fun with that. And on this page, I wanted to do an acrylic painting, but it just wasn't turning out well and it was just getting muddied and I got impatient, so I just kind of scrapped it. And then I did this watercolor painting and I really love it. Would love to do more stuff like this. I was pregnant at the time, so I was drawing <laughs> lots of pregnant ladies. And I had an obsession with vultures. I drew them a few times. Maybe just three times. <laughs> and then just doing more figure and gesture drawings. I really enjoy doing gesture drawings. They're a good way for me to kind of let loose and have fun. Here, I had just watched Squid Games, practiced some caricatures in there, some more character designing and portrait. I love drawing houses. That was another vulture. <laughs> And here, um, I can just feel it now, like, this is kind of where I just didn't know what to do. I had seen someone else do this exercise where they just draw some random shapes and then create characters out of them, so I did that to try and hopefully get myself out of this rut that I was in, but it kind of just made me feel worse. It just doesn't feel like me. Um, it was very hard to keep going, but that is my tip number one, to just keep going, uh, even when it's hard. Sometimes we're just going through a tough spot. And through perseverance, we can find a way back again. We can learn a lot from continuing to work even when we don't want to. And even though it's hard to just keep going when you don't feel like you want to, there are things you can do to help, like trying new things. I did that a few times and though I didn't have the outcome that I wanted and I didn't really like <laughs> what I came up with, I still tried something new and I worked on my sketchbook. You can also look to others for inspiration. See how others fill their sketchbook. Maybe they do something that is inspiring to you but you've never tried, so give it a try. This is one of my favorite pages in my sketchbook. I really love how I made the marks in this one specifically, just with the, the brush pen and a few others. I love drawing portraits and it's actually something that I kind of, throughout the sketchbook, tried to avoid doing because it is a comfort zone for me, but I wanted to push myself to do things that I'm not good at and learn new skills. But sometimes you just need to do what is comfortable. The second thing I learned is to indulge in the kind of art that makes you happy even if it's what you always do. Sometimes you need that before you can do things that are hard. I would kind of practice doing what I knew and what was comfortable so that I would have that encouragement and success to help motivate me to do the hard things. And sometimes, you know, it's just good for you to indulge in what you love to do. It doesn't really make sense to push yourself to create art that you don't really enjoy just to learn it. If you don't enjoy it and you're not having fun with the process, stop. <laughs> do something you enjoy. Do something you like doing. It's okay. I'm giving you permission. <laughs> but here's another example of taking inspiration from another artist. I saw that they did this practice where they did these blobs of watercolor, create something out of it, and it wasn't my favorite either. I don't like the drawings I came up with. They just don't, they aren't reminiscent of me and my style and what I want to be creating regularly. And here I was practicing drawing some elderly ladies because I don't do that enough. I tend to draw young, pretty people. <laughs> 
and old men. That's kind of my range. So I wanted to step outside of that and draw some elderly women and some children. And I practiced some gouache as well. This was originally from a reference and then I really, really liked it. So I wanted to create her into a character. There she is. And she actually pops up again. This was just some more drawing just to get something on the page. But um, this page was kind of a, a bit of a breakthrough moment for me. Which leads me to tip number three. Use that medium that you've always wanted to use. Something that you've always wanted to try, but just never let yourself do for fear of failing or whatever. <laughs> I found that what I really wanted to be doing in my sketchbook was just trying new things because I really wanted to understand that medium and learn how to use it for myself. Um, this was kind of a continuation of the previous page, just trying to do something new and different. Um, so <laughs> here I have a comic of me trying to decide what to do for a comic. And this was from class, so it's not very comprehensive. And here is that character from back here. I wanted to create a story for her. Here she is with another character. I just designed them as like these two mystery solving kids. And here are some thumbnail sketches for the Shadow and Bone book cover I did. And here I was starting to practice more with being intentional with my mark making when using pencil. Like I wanted to create full illustrations with just pencil. I was also really obsessed with trees and just wanted to play around with stylizing them, making them shape orientated. I've been wanting to do a comic of me and my husband, so I started designing some simplified character designs that I could easily draw over and over again for a comic, and I haven't worked on it since, but I started it. And then I did some more pen sketches. I really love doing figure drawing, so I studied some artists that really inspired me with their figure drawings and worked on perfecting my own style and expression when it comes to figures. I was studying Claire Wendling, and I just really love how she draws her figures, and especially feet, and then did a few of my own figure drawings. And down here, I just wanted to kind of portray the relationship I feel like I have with nature and how it inspires me, and I like to revisit that and make it a finished piece. <laughs> If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know this page. It was in my sketch for a week video. And I've always wanted to try more simplified styles. I really like this one. When I like to make that a finished one as well. But I really, really love this one. This is probably one of my favorite drawings in the whole sketchbook. I just love the shapes and edges and curves. Just all the marks and lines inside the figure. And this one I was playing around with using a blending stop, which I hadn't really used before and kind of avoided just because I didn't really know how to use it. And this is kind of a hot mess. <laughs> didn't know what to draw. There's some fun things. Some things I was exploring and playing around with. And I really like these. I had drawn for this first and just really hated it. So I went at it again and loved it. <laughs> and this is kind of an exploratory page. But kind of a mess. I just had no direction. My fourth tip is to set goals and reasonable expectations for yourself. The majority of the sketchbook is kind of just lost. And it's because it, I didn't have direction when I was working in it. I didn't know what I was working towards. I didn't have any goals, except for just to draw every day. And so that's what I did. I drew every day, but I wasn't working towards anything. I think to help you get that passion back, you need to set expectations for yourself and recognize what it is that you're wanting to get out of sketchbooking. I had some more direction with this one, I think you can tell. This one's actually like a sketchbook a spread where I just get all the cohesive thing, like they're all kind of connected. But having something behind them, whether it's like a fish or these leaves, and I want to do more things like this one, for sure. <laughs> okay, I drew this and I was trying to go for that like sketchy style, but it's not intentional. I think you still have to have some kind of skill when you're going sketchy to make it look good. But I had done this one as well and decided to practice oil pastels with it. I'd seen a few artists using oil pastels and I'd honestly never really heard of it. I was like, that sounds like a lot of fun. It's like painting, but you're drawing. And this isn't the prettiest finished piece, especially the background. Like, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> I just let myself play and try something new and it, you know, that's what a sketchbook is for. This page I had started a 100 heads challenge and again did not finish. 
<laughs> I really love this one. I love the emotion of it. I had learned technique of using an alcohol marker to blend pencil drawings, so I did that with these as well as this one. And I just kind of got that misty, ghosty feel that I've been searching for. That was an awesome discovery. It was scary at first to go back on these drawings that I really like to potentially mess them up, but I think it elevated them and made them so much better. I also got in the mood to do some more watercolor, so I went back to a few sketches and just painted them. I think for me, I came to realize that what I want to be doing is just making my sketchbook a piece of art itself, put myself into my sketchbook. Which leads me to my fifth tip. Treat your sketchbook like a journal. I want my sketchbook to be a place where I document my progress and my journey as an artist. In other words, I want to put myself into my sketchbook. When you lay your heart on the pages, it will show and your passion will come up. Trust me, when you do this, I promise you will love your sketchbook and enjoy the process a whole lot more. This is a drawing of an idea I got from seeing some shadows on our ceiling at night and I just wanted to draw some creatures down here with that loose, flowy, sketchy mark making that I've been- I really enjoy doing. And again, I just went back to a sketch with watercolor. These are some sketches that I did at a park that I went to with my daughter. I don't do um, outdoor sketching a whole lot and I think that's something I definitely want to practice more with my next sketchbook. Um, so here I want to experiment with charcoal. <laughs> I really enjoyed my figure drawing class that I had taken and I thought, what if I tried using charcoal on my sketchbook and um, that's what happened. It's not, it's not too cute. I tried it and I learned that I don't like it as much or maybe I just need to practice some more or find different paper to use charcoal with. I think it charcoal works better on smoother paper. It just doesn't look so good on this textured um, surface. So keep that in mind. And I kept going. I really wanted to figure it out and I I do like this one. I think of all my charcoal ones, this is probably my favorite. I got that kind of hazy look I was wanting. Kind of like a painterly charcoal. And I really think if I try it on smoother paper, I will like the results a whole lot more. Here I was using like a black pencil and I been wanting to do more religious work, so. I drew Jesus. <laughs> and I was also studying Eliza Ivanova. I studied one of her drawings. I just love how confident she is in her mark making and I want to practice that. If all else fails, take a break. Put your sketchbook away and go play with another hobby. Sometimes <laughs> we've just been working so hard and been so focused on one thing that we kind of get tunnel vision. We need outside sources to help us with our creation, with our inspiration. You'd be surprised at how connected the other hobbies and your other passions are to your art. So give it a try. Take a step away from your sketchbook, from your art, and indulge in your other hobbies and see how they can inspire your current work. I hope you enjoyed those tips and I hope that they help you with your sketchbook. And I will see you next time. Bye! Bum, 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 bum. I never know how to leave, I'm just like... <laughs> Bye! <laughs>